Arise, arise. I greet you, ladies and gentlemen, in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. To the shepherd of this house, I thank you, I honor you for allowing me, Pastor I.D. and Pastor Haj Suju, I thank you so much for allowing me this opportunity. This morning, I, God has allowed me to come to you this morning with a little word of encouragement. This past July, I lost my mom. She was called home. And one of the things about my mother is my mom was a praying woman. And my mother used to always say, hold on to God's unchanging hand. If we have some senior saints in the house, I'm sure y'all remember that hymn. Do you remember that hymn? Hold on to God's unchanging hand. My mother was an uneducated woman, if you will. She was from Alabama, from in the countryside. She had a fifth grade education. And she worked and she cleaned, uh, she cleaned hotels and she would always say, Loretta, get your education so you don't have to do what I do. But her words of encouragement, not only to me and my brother and her grandchildren was always the same. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Now, if I'm honest with you, I really didn't understand what that meant when I was younger. So if any of you, y'all know what I mean. You know, when you're young, you really don't know what that means. It wasn't until I lived life a little longer that I realized what my mother was telling me when she said, hold on to God's unchanging hand. And I would like to share this scripture verse with you. It comes from Isaiah 43, 1 and 4. And it reads, the Savior of Israel but now, O oh Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. O oh Israel, the one who formed you says, do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you go through the deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through the rivers of difficulties, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of the oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt as a ransom for your freedom. I gave Ethiopia and Sheba in your place. Others were given in exchange for you. I trade their lives for yours because you are precious to me. You are honored. I love you. In the mighty name of Jesus, remove Loretta from this flesh, Father God, and have your way in these moments, God. God, not let me stand up here and say a good word, Father God, but a word that will do some good for your people. In the mighty name of Jesus, bless each and every one, God. Let our ears and our hearts and our minds be open to receive the word of the living God. In Jesus' name, amen. The title of my word today that I got about six minutes and 15, 14 seconds for is it will not overtake you. Amen. As I shared with you before, my mother used to always say, hold on to God's unchanging hand. But it wasn't until I began to understand and read God's word for myself and began to develop that relationship with him for myself that I understood what it meant when you hold on to God's unchanging hand. See, Hebrews teaches us over in 13 and 6, he says, so we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. I need you to tell yourself, I will not be afraid. I will not be afraid. I will not be afraid. What can a mere mortal do to me? No man has control over our lives. See, I chose the New Living Version of the text today. I'm not sure which one was put on the screen, but I chose the New Living Version because it resonated with many of us in the way we are living today. 
Verse number two of that text says, when we go through deep waters, it says, I will be with you. When you go through rivers, difficulties, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. See, my first thing that I want to share with you is no water is so deep that God can't get you through it. See, have you ever been in a situation so deep? deep that you didn't know how you was going to get out of it. See, I'm talking about those situations where you sit on the side of your bed and go, Lord, have mercy. How did this happen to me? I think we've all been there, but God told me to come in here on this lovely Sunday morning to remind you just like the children of the, just like the children of Israel, when life's army gets behind you and you seem like you have a situation in front of you and the road is too wide for anybody to reach over and give you a hand and it seemed too deep for you to waddle through the Lord told me to tell you today don't worry about it he will just split it wide open so you can walk right on through on dry ground so be encouraged today beloved there is no situation so deep that you might have got yourself into or that life or the enemy may have prepared for you that God just can't simply cut away through. The second thing that I want to share with you is it says it won't drown. You will not drown in life's difficulties. See, as we go through life, we all face difficulties. And if I'm honest with you, some of us, the adversary create, and we know some of them, we create. But beloved, I want you to know on this beautiful Sunday morning, and I want you to remember that no matter how you got into it, whether you got into it or the adversary got you into it, we serve a God that will get you right on out. <laughs> I want you to remember that the river does flow, especially during the rainy season. You know that season in life when trouble seems to hit us. See, the rivers of life will have be filling up quickly and the currents will be moving back and forth and they will be moving fast. But beloved, let me tell you on today that you will not drown. Tell your neighbor you will not drown. Today, beloved, I come all the way from Dubai to tell you that you will not drown in your fears. You will not drown in your sickness. You will not drown in your finances in the mighty name of Jesus. See, you will not drown in that conflict. You will not drown in that relationship. Let me tell you why. Because the Lord, your God, we're talking about Yahweh, Emmanuel, your Redeemer, your battle relax your will in the middle of the wheel your lily in the valley your healer your mighty counselor your God your mighty precious God he is your rod and he is your salve and just like that life jacket he will keep your head right above water so that as you float downstream you may get some bumps beloved you may get some bruises beloved but let me tell you something you will survive I need you to tell your enemy today, you will survive in the mighty name of Jesus. Tell him, I will survive in Jesus' name. I got one minute and I'm going to get through this last point. The last thing it says is you will walk through the fire of oppression. You will not be burned up and the flames will not consume you. See, beloved, I need you to understand that oppression means to be in a belonged state of cruelty or untreatment. Beloved, we have one oppressor, and he has come to kill, steal, and destroy. See, now, while the plans of your life, I know some of you may be saying, that can be my oppressor because I'm looking at my oppressor every day. But I want you to remember that the Bible teaches us in Ephesians 6 and 12, for we fight not against flesh and blood, but of enemies of against evil rulers and authorities of unseen world against mighty powers in the dark world and against the evil spirits in heavenly places. So I want you to remember, I want you to know that as I wrap this up, that the enemy can't touch you unless God allows. And we serve a God that declares that all things, not some things, all things work together for our 
good. So even when he tries to oppress you, even when they're trying to hold you down, I want you to declare on this day, victory, oh victory, victory, oh victory, victory today is mine. You can declare and tell Satan, I told Satan to get thee behind because victory today is mine. See, he may try to push you. He may try to hold you. He may try to hold you back. But beloved, God told me to come all the way to Nigeria to let you know that you are more precious than gold. So when you come out, you'll be precious. When you come out, you'll have more faith. When you come out, you'll have more joy. When you come out, you'll have more peace. In the mighty name of Jesus, as I wrap this thing up, I need you all to stand to your feet in this house. I know it's early in the morning, but the power of life and death resides in your tongue. And I need you on this morning to declare victory, oh victory. Victory, oh victory. You will not take me out. You will not take me under. I shall not drown. And I shall not be burned up. In the mighty name of Jesus, victory on this Sunday morning is yours. Amen. To God be the glory. Let's start for Jesus. Victory. Victory is ours in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you so much.